Every one of us who attempts to draw closer to God, who, who seeks to live a spiritual life, will experience times of dryness, times when prayer feels a real struggle, when every word must be forced from our lips, when, when our heart can feel dead, and we worry perhaps that the fire, that spiritual fire, is, is dying out within us. Well, we mustn't be concerned and troubled by these feelings. We must push on. We must be robust in our spiritual outlook, not trust in our feelings. Elder Ephraim of Mount Athos and Arizona says to us that often the spiritual life can be like the seasons of the year. Sometimes when we look at the countryside around us in winter, when the frost and the snow has fallen, what lies beneath may appear to be dead. Even the grass can wither, and for a while at least there are no leaves on the trees, and we wonder, will there ever be new life? And of course, the seasons turn, spring comes, and green shoots come forth once more. Life was dormant, but it was there, lying beneath the ice and snow. And so it is with our spiritual lives. But we don't wait for the, the turning of natural seasons, for new life to come forth from what appears to be dead. The new life that we seek in our spiritual lives is brought forth through struggle, through spiritual struggle, through the basics of the simple Christian living, repentance, prayer, forgiveness of each other, charity and so on. This is what brings forth life where it appears there is death, where the green shoots of our spiritual lives can be brought forth from soil that represents the heart. We know that the soil of the heart receives seed from God, and God, of course, in his generosity, casts the seed of life and the, the capacity for salvation and to know him into to all hearts. He casts the seed of life into the whole cosmos, and yet that seed can wither and die if it falls on bad soil. The soil, of course, represents the heart, and we must work the soil. We must struggle, make the heart worthy of the seed of life that God casts there. And so too, weeds may grow. Weeds may grow and strangle the seed. We must watch because the weeds represent evil, worldly thoughts. We must learn to recognize evil thoughts within us early. Catch them before they grow, before they begin to strangle the seed of life within us. In our spiritual lives, we are so often accustomed to thinking of attempting to imitate the lives of the saints to put the teachings and commands of Christ into practice as the saints have done before us. And this is absolutely right, and we must do this, and we must know the lives of the saints to imitate them. But we must also do those things that the devil does not do. Seek to do everything that we know the demons never do in this world. The demons never repent, they never forgive, they never love. Let us do those things as we worship God, giving glory to God and never to ourselves. The demons are completely lacking in these things. So let us begin then with that forgiveness. There is a story in the, the Desert Fathers. St. John the Dwarf went to his abbot and he wished to build a, a temple to God, a church. And the abbot said to him, you must begin every building with the foundations. St. John the Dwarf, of course, said, yes, yes, I know. And then realizing the abbot was teaching him something more profound, he says, and what is the foundation on which everything is built? And his abbot said to him, the foundations are our neighbors. So the foundations of our spiritual lives are in our neighbors, the way we treat our neighbors, the way we try to forgive each other. There is a saying in the Fathers that the person who treats us badly, the, tr the person who abuses us, the person who causes us great discomfort, 
may be a great blessing from Christ himself. Because it is, it is in the cruelty and the, the harsh words of others that we're stripped of pride and ego and are confronted. It may be those harsh words that give us an opportunity to forgive and love in the face of persecution that becomes our opportunity to find salvation. So let us pray especially for those neighbors, those people who treat us badly, for they may be in a special need of our prayers more than those who love us. And we must cultivate vigilance, vigilance in our spiritual lives. There is an old saying from the Desert Fathers, the one who trips most is he who runs carelessly. We must never run carelessly in the spiritual life. We must be vigilant, watchful. Watchful over ourselves and our hearts, the motives of our actions, our reactions to the way people speak to us. Do their words evoke pride or judgment? Or do they evoke humility and gratitude? And of course we should be grateful to God. Elder Ephraim again says to us that sleep is like an icon of death. And every morning that we wake is like a new beginning, a fresh start, an opportunity to repent, like new life. And every morning we should begin our day with gratitude that we are alive, that God has given us another day to repent and to seek salvation because our days are running out. He comes, the bridegroom comes when we least expect him in the middle of the night, the darkness of the night, when some will be sleeping spiritually. We must be vigilant because we must preserve that which God has given us. So often we, we think of achieving and aspiring and where we will go spiritually. But let us also consider what God has given us, the seed that God has already sown within us. How do we preserve what we have? How do we guard against losing, having stolen from us, what God has given us? For Christ has blessed us with so much, and yet, and yet, the evil one seeks to rob us even of what we have. And this is why we must be vigilant. The demons seek to steal from us, that little progress we may have made in our lives. Let us preserve what we have been given by God. And let us remember, of course, how Adam, who, when he sinned, brought sickness and suffering and death to all humanity. Adam's sin affected the whole cosmos. It affected all humanity. Now, we don't recognize, we don't have the discernment to recognize the impact of our actions always. We don't always recognize particularly the spiritual impact of what we're doing on other people. But just as Adam's sin brought death and disease to all human beings, so too, when we struggle, when we repent, when we try to forgive, yes, we are being changed, we are being transformed, but we are also affecting the cosmos and all humanity. And those who are redeemed are a blessing to all people.